My name is Maggie McLeod. I'm the Executive Minister for the Aboriginal Ministries Circle at the General Council Office. And I'm here with um, Elder Lorna Standing Ready, leading Elder for the All Native Circle Conference. So I'm happy to be with you again, uh, Lorna. It's uh, been a week and a half since our time together at the Edmonton uh, National Truth and Reconciliation event. And perhaps we'll, we'll engage in some conversation now about some, some post-reflections and uh, uh, what's been on our hearts and minds as, as we've come out of that experience. That was a good time, w overwhelming mm -hmm. uh, in all your whole being, I, uh, spiritually overwhelming. The stories, mm -hmm. you know, one heard there, you know, mentally overwhelming mm -hmm. it, and, and physically, you know, the stories you heard, oh, it was, it was something else mm -hmm. and I, I enjoyed it in a different sort of way, but meeting people and uh, I wasn't alone as a survivor for 10 years. Mm. I wasn't alone. I felt so, uh, so close to the different people that shared their stories, brave enough to share them, brave enough to speak from their hearts. Mm. Uh, it was, mm -hmm. it was comforting to know that others were there. But uh, it was a challenge as well, a challenge to heal yourself, to begin, because the story will always remain with survivors. We, we are strong, resilient. Our parents didn't want to talk about it. Neither did our grandparents, and they took their stories to the grave. But Canada needs to know what happened to us. Our world is changing, our church is changing, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to see the, the young children going into sweat lodges, learning to smoke the pipe, learning to fill the pipe, first of all, you know, and <clears throat> it's, um, these are our leaders coming up, and we must nurture them. We, we, we have to have that, have that voice, I think, from all, of our, from all of those ages. If we look at the four stages of life, you know, the, 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 the child, the youth, and the adult, and the elder, I mean, together we, we bring that, that whole, that collective. So, so I think as we go forward and we, we, we think about the intergenerational impact of the residential school and, and colonization. It, it's so important for all of our voices to be together uh, from, from all of those um, from all of those stages of life. Yeah. And we need the guidance and the wisdom we, and we need to hear the hope of the future in the, uh, from our children and from our, uh, from our youth. How do we continue to make space to make sure that all of, the, all of our voices are heard? And, you know, being a leader is um, challenging at times, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I, I can say that I'm, I'm there and I hope to, uh, you know, be not a leader anymore, and, <laughs> but, you know, mm -hmm. um, and to rely on young women like you mm -hmm. who don't forget their roots or where they come from. Yes, we have Cheryl Jourdain at the All Native Circle Conference who's giving strong leadership. And, and Indigenous people across the church, Adrian Jacobs at the Sandy Soto Spiritual Center. And so how do we support and uplift and hold? It's an important time to affirm one another. Yes, we have a lot of people across Canada, as you know, mm -hmm. in different uh, denominations and they're thriving, but uh, we still need our elders to, to, be, to be there for them because our elders are going now and uh, we, it's, it's hard. It's hard when you, when you know there's so much work to be done to uh, join our traditional way and the United Church, the broader society's way of uh, appraising 
the creator for all that he's made and the Lord. You know, they are one and the same. And how the Unity Accord was signed, that was the ultimate, uh, in my eyes, of uh, reconciliation with the United Church in our traditional way. That's the very foundation of who we are and all that there is with the four generations, the four directions, our sacred four, my girl. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for the gift that you bring, your eldership, your wisdom, your life experience, and thankful for all the elders within our United Church, many of whom are survivors, who offer their, their kindness and wisdom and their support, their ever consistent and steady support. Without, without our eldership, um, we, uh, we would be struggling. So you bring us that comfort and that hope because we know you've lived and you've survived and that you've thrived and, and that now you, you're with us to share. And so I thank you and I say thanks to all our elders. Mm -hmm.